Okay, we're going to be doing a pressure test on a Detroit 60 head um, to make sure that there's no cracks or anything like that in the water system. Um, also to make sure that the cups are still good. Make sure there's no water bypassing uh, into the cylinder past the cup. First thing you do is we need to install one of the cam caps. And then we're going to grab the valve compressor tool. Um, I made this one because the factory one is quite expensive. But we thread the tool into the portion of the cam cap. Slide the tool down. Center the, the tool over the valve. And then you're going to press down and pull out the spring keepers. This is much simpler than the, uh, the clam style, or the clamp style rather, that goes around from the bottom of the valve up to the top of the valve stem and it's also a lot easier than the, the one that you have to twist on and off and it just compresses the spring itself. Um, I wound up breaking my last one which was the twist on and off one. But uh, the one trick with this style that I'm using right now is that it has to be on a flat surface and you want to pad that surface with a diaper or a towel or something like that to keep it from uh, the valve from hitting um, a metal surface. You could use a wood table, that'd be fine too. But then you're just going to do that, repeat as necessary, until all of them are done. Now you don't necessarily have to take the valves out first. Um, in fact, if you leave them in, if there are any cracks inside the, um, the ports, the water will be retained by the top of the valve. So you can see water build up that way. But I'm taking these out because I have to clean uh, the valves and the valve seats anyway. Let's see here, I'm moving the cam cap to the next section. No need for torque here, it's just tighten it. Moving it again. Now that that's done, remove the tool. And that same tool will be used to reinstall the keepers as well. All the keepers are removed. Now, uh, you got the exhaust side and the intake side. I'll be removing the valves and the springs. I like to keep them in order into exactly what position they're in. I know they're all the same. Uh, the spring rates are all the same, but I just think it's better just to keep everything in the right spot. Especially the valves, because you know they kind of take their wear set in, so. 
There we are. Marking them out. Laying them down. I drew out on the table a little map that shows, uh, you know, one through six cylinders and um, an arrow for number one, and then uh, a spot for each valve. Installing the lift cradle. Taking off the cam cap. Tilt the head up on its edge so I can pull the valves out. Of course, you want to be careful. There's everything all lined up. It's a good time to inspect what's going on inside the ports and make sure the valve seats aren't busted up. You can see some coolant built up on there, but I think that happened when I pulled the uh, uh, the thermostat off. Good amount of carbon buildup on the valve seats. I'm doing this pressure test. Um, we, we blew out two of the cylinders. And we were wondering if we were getting coolant by passing into it, which uh, would have caused an overheating condition. And uh, when I mean it blew out two cylinders, what is, is happening is our, our rings are getting sucked into the piston which is uh, killing the compression. So all that compression is going down in the crankcase and blowing up the uh, uh, all the non-pressurized parts of the oil, which isn't good. Here's the pressure tester kit that I built. Now the one from Detroit just has uh, strips of metal that go across the uh, water ports. Um, obviously that's a lot smaller and lighter. Uh, mine is a, a whole plate that covers the whole thing. Here's our stand-in head bolts. You take uh, a long bolt, put down the factory washer. Obviously slip down that, slip that down through the head. Go ahead and get them all in there. got the gasket which goes between the fire deck and the pressure plate um, I found a nice big roll of silicon gasket uh, I don't know exactly how thick it is it's a little less than an eighth of an inch thick um, it can be found at a plumbing store here's the plate I did a half inch plate a lot beefier than it really needs to be, but it's what I had laying around. And, you know, being that thick does keep it from warping while I'm tightening everything down. Then a big fender washer and then the nut. Go ahead and tighten all those down, get them started.
I'm showing torquing it down to 45. That's a mistake. I actually torqued the whole thing down to 30 foot pounds, not 45, so 30 foot pounds. Uh, 30 foot, foot pounds over that many bolts is a lot of torque, so that's even 30 is probably excessive. We're moving to water temperature sensor. Oh, and uh, I torque them down in the circular pattern um, as prescribed by the manual. So remove the water temperature sensor. Now I'm cleaning the thermostat uh, mounting area. We've got a gasket a plate that goes over that. The plate has a nipple in it. And that's where we're going to attach the uh, air regulator. Tighten that down to 20 foot pounds. It's also using that same gasket material, it's just a different color. Taking out the injector o rings that were left in there. This is a sacrificial set of injectors that I gutted and uh, cut the tops off of. Um, you could also get the uh, proper tool, but these were cheap because we couldn't return them. I welded a nut on there so I could get at it with the uh, uh, claw pry bar. So with the uh, injector O-ring, um, go ahead and put those in there. Install the clamps as normal. It all goes down to 45 foot-pounds per the manual. Installing the air regulator. It's got a shutoff valve on it. Now I'm filling the head up with water. So the manual actually tells you to do this. Um, you seal the head, uh, put in a uh, blinking plate where the water temperature sensor goes. Uh, but the manual tells you to seal the head and then dunk it in a tank of hot water. Um, that water being over 100 degrees. I don't remember exactly, but we don't have a hot tank of water. So I'm doing um, air over water. And that the water in there is just going to be whatever the tap temperature is. I'm not heating it up at all. But we are putting 30 pounds of pressure on top of the water. Okay, so we're going to be uh, uh, putting 30 pounds of pressure on top of the water that's in the head. And I do the test for four hours. I had started out doing it for one hour, and um, I had no results after one hour on one head. So I put it back on the engine, and it wound up leaking. Um, so we had to pull the head back off, and uh, it wound up being bad uh, cups. So I had replaced those. Um, so I've updated my time testing to four hours now. And that seems to be doing pretty good so far. So, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Um, I'm mostly making these for instructional here at the shop. But, um, you know, if I can help anybody out, that's great. You guys have a good night.